Hey everyone, Wolf Lord Row here. Today we discuss the Civil War on Terror. As the High Lords move from plotting against Gilliman to outright rebellion. Oh boy. Spoiler warning to begin, the events we are discussing today are from the Warhammer 40k novel Watchers of the Throne, The Regent's Shadow by Chris Rate. As always, I really recommend you read the story for yourself first, as that's the best way to enjoy the lore for yourself. Not only that, we help to support the Great Games Workshop and Black Library, because without them, we don't have this amazing lore to talk about. I will put a link in the description as always. But with that said, let's just jump straight in. Okay, so as you may remember, a few weeks ago we covered the brewing discontent between the High Lords of Terror with the sudden return of the Primarch Rebute Gilliman. If you missed it, be sure to go back and check it out first before continuing on with this one. But as we discussed, many of the High Lords were privately wary of the returned Primarch believing him to be an undoubtable threat to their personal power bases. And well, they weren't wrong to think so. For seeing the travesty that had befallen the Imperium, and not to mention the throne world itself, Gilliman wasted little time in acting. After emerging from the Emperor's throne room and removed several High Lords from office, now, for all Gilliman's decisiveness here, he's no fool, and he doesn't remove them by death, as would many of his brothers. The High Lords removed are allowed to retire with ample estates and riches, to live their lives out in the splendour no other in the Imperium could match. It's certainly not a bad retirement. And while Gilliman's tact could be applauded, perhaps taking a hint from one of his brother Primarchs, may well have been the better option. The High Lords can be as disgruntled as they want when they're dead, leaving them alive, even in luxury, only allows their resentment to fester. If Gilliman had of truly cleaned house, killing these resentful High Lords, would it really have made shockwaves outside the palace? Does the average citizen of the Imperium, or even Terra, know who the High Lords are? Does the average Astra Militarum commander for that matter? Or is a High Lord of Terra merely a title where a personal name doesn't really matter? But regardless, after Gilliman's enforced changes and departure from Terra on his Indomitus Crusade, Terra, still a very unstable world, became even more embroiled in conflict, as rebellions erupted across the world. Now, Terra of all worlds of the Imperium is not without its defences, and that's an understatement to say the least, for although many of the Emperor's talons have departed into the stars along with the Crusade, the Emperor's own Custodes and the Sisters of Silence are still a force no other Imperial world could hope to match, let alone the chapter of the Imperial Fists, who still have a substantial presence on the throne world. The Sentinels of Terror honouring the legacy of their Primarch, Rogal Dawn. So with such an impressive defence, how could rebellions really break out? And not only break out, but continue and spread. As soon as the Custodes and the Imperial Fists appear to quash one, another stronghold would quickly rise. As if the rebels were one step ahead every time. And not only that, these weren't just disgruntled rioters we're talking about. Emboldened by the ruinous powers, these rebels were well-trained and well-equipped, heavily implying that they had substantial backing from somewhere and someone powerful. 
And this fact was not going unnoticed by those who dared to look. And it was the new Imperial Chancellor, Jek, who began to discreetly investigate just that. Soon becoming undeniable that that someone must be a High Lord of Terror. The more Jek delved, the worse it became. Armaments, Astra Militarum regiments, and even Imperial Navy movements. Something very big was being orchestrated. The icing on the cake, the arrival of the Minotaurs chapter. Now, we'll dive into the Minotaurs another time, but this chapter had long been rumoured to have ties with the High Lords of Terror themselves. So much so, that they may well have been founded explicitly for the High Lord's personal use. For this chapter to arrive back at the Throne World, in full chapter false no less, now of all times, was yet another mysterious piece of the puzzle. Despite the Minotaur's initial claims of assistance, their arrival only complicated matters further as their intense relations with the Imperial Fist chapter bordered on outright hostility. And as all this came to pass, Jex investigating revealed perhaps the most definitive clue yet, and it all pointed to High Lord Fadix, Grand Master of the Assassinorum. After a number of hours' work, with our eyes swimming and our heads aching, we finally gave up. Whatever we tried, whichever sources we used, whatever statistical methods we employed, the answer was always the same. The difference between what Fadix had reported to the Council six months ago and what he had supplied to Indomitus when ordered was 12. You may think this a paltry figure, Perhaps it could have been a rounding error. Or just a mistake in some document that no one had ever thought to correct. If we had been talking about Militarum regiments, then I would have agreed with you. Whole divisions of those could be miscounted, even forgotten about. The Militarum, however, numbered in the trillions, whereas assassins were a rare commodity beyond price. Their production was the labour of decades in secret facilities. Their deployment, tightly controlled by law and precedent. They did not simply go missing. They were treasured items, stored with care and used with prudence. Those twelve alone might have held the difference between the success of an entire war front, so devastating could their activities be when used effectively. Whichever way we looked at it, then, the Grand Master of the Officio Assassinorum had either over-reported his assets to the Council, or had under-reported them to Gilliman. I could think of no reason why he might do the former. There was at least one reason he might have done the latter. So Fadix has been hiding twelve assassins from record certainly implying he has some form of involvement. And as the relations between the Imperial Fist chapter and the Minotaurs reached boiling point, with the Minotaurs seemingly doing everything they could to destroy evidence, the traitors finally revealed themselves, making their play. Broadcasting across terror on all channels, every building across the throne world was seeing this message. Former High Lord Hematalian, once Master of the Administratum, stood with current High Lords Drachmar and Fadix, two more former High Lords, and even the Lord High Admiral. All of them backed up by Moloch, Chapter Master of the Minotaurs. This was truly a power play, in its most corrupt form declaring that they and they alone had ended the rebellions which were plaguing terror, 
which all the while they had been secretly funding and fueling. And then Hematalian, the lead speaker, revealed their true intent. A return to the Imperium as it was, before the Primarch's return. Basically them, back in power. Look how things have gone since the Primarch took control. And here I am fixing his mess. You have to admire the sheer cojones of this guy. Making a power play against the only living Primarch. Believe me, I do not wish to assume command in this way, Hematalian continued. I regret that our ancient and sacred precepts were overturned so brutally, and that this has therefore become necessary. Thankfully, others of the council also understood the need to act. You see beside me two of that number. In the void above, two more stand with us in command of our fleets. Together with my valued colleague, the rightful Ecclesiarch, we are six. The Hexarchy, a refutation of the failed Reform Council, and a renewal of the old one. Moreover, you may be assured that we are men and women, our bodies untouched by manipulation, gene science or suspect magics. The Imperium has always been governed by such men and women. Its foundational laws state that such must be so. Indeed, those very laws were drafted by the one who, in this current age, has done so much to uproot them. Perhaps his memory faded during his long slumber. But we are here now to remind him. You have to wonder here if they'd still be attempting this had Gilliman remained on Terra rather than being off out amongst the stars, trying to save the Imperium with his Indomitus Crusade. I'm willing to bet it's no coincidence they're making their move now, with Gilliman so far away. Honestly, he must look around at this Imperium he has returned to, and wonder why he bothers, and just wonder what the Emperor himself must think. With the enemy revealed, a meeting is arranged between the two parties. Current High Lords led by Trajan Valoris, Captain General of the Custodes no less, and the Rebellion, the Old High Lords, led by Hematalian. His demands are simple. Remove the High Lords Gilliman appointed and reinstall the Old an immediate end to all the Primarch's reforms, and, unbelievably, a motion of censor to be passed on Gilliman himself, placing him under the High Lord's authority, and summoning him back to Terra for examination, essentially putting Gilliman on trial. And not only that, an immediate end to the Indomitus Crusade, and all its resources to be returned to the soul system. And this truly shows the unbridled selfishness of those High Lords, of why they needed replacing in the first place. All they care about is their own lives, their own survival and their own power. No concern or regard to the fact that Gilliman's Indomitus Crusade is a desperate roll of the dice to save the Imperium. Like the Roman emperors of old, you get the sense they would let all of Rome burn, as long as they remain safe and in power. Now, incredulously, rather than unleashing the custodies on these scum, Valoris asks for time to consider their demands. They had banked on the Custodes remaining neutral, and Valoris was playing right into their hands. There's an absolutely killer line from Alea, the Sister of Silence, as she argues with Valerian, her Custodes counterpart. You could do it, if you chose to. 
I had seen the Adeptus Custodes at war and knew what they were capable of. Even an entire chapter of Space Marines, backed up by thousands of Allied troops and armor, should not have given them pause. Such an awesome line, really letting you know how truly incomparable the Emperor's Custodes are. The Custodes were the only force capable of taking on the forces of the traitorous High Lords. Without them acting, Terra was in the palm of their hand. The Imperial Fists, though, were not so amicable as Valoris. Bringing the Phalanx to bear, though in truth it was in need of substantial repairs, and most likely would not have been capable of destroying the traitor fleet, Captain Garadon of the Imperial Fists was not about to appease the traitors, in any form. His Primarch stood against them 10,000 years ago, and he'd be damned if he did not do the same now. And as the countdown to battle begun, with vessels priming their shields and weapons, the true plan was executed. Phadix's twelve assassins. Four Calidus aboard the bridge of the enemy flagship, and eight Vindicare upon Terra, all executing at exactly the same moment. So expertly, even the Astartes of the Minotaurs were completely taken unaware. Every head of the corrupt rebellion ended in a split second. Phadix, Grand Master of the Assassinorum, had been a double agent the entire time. And he was not alone, as Captain General Trajan Valoris had played his role expertly too. All of it had transpired exactly as someone had already expected. And that someone was the Primarch Rebute Gilliman. So while he may not have removed the High Lords with death, he knew full well the corruption and pride that beat at the heart of terror. And that it was truly only a matter of time until they revealed themselves with his absence. And they did exactly that. With their move made and their die cast, as they were about to fire and quite possibly destroy a loyal chapter vessel of the Imperium, such as the infamous Phalanx, they received the death their treason deserved. In the name of the Emperor. Man, can you believe the corruption that beats at the heart of the throne world? You have the shining light of the Emperor, sacrificing himself for every moment for 10,000 years. And this is the actions of his High Lords, who are supposed to rule in his name. Man, how disappointed he must truly be. And what would Malkador think? The once first Lord of Terror. How far he would see his people have fallen. How much do the High Lords need a return of Malkador, the Sigilite, to guide their path once more? But hats off to Gilliman. I certainly never saw that coming. It shows the understanding he has of the human mind. For all his genetic elevation, he understands the selfishness and the corruption. But again, how disappointed he must be to know that this would all transpire exactly as he predicted, to have to plan against these actions. It's just another highlight of the absolute disappointment this current Imperium has become. How far the light has fallen since the days of the Great Crusade, and a testament of the damage done by his brother Horus, ending the great dream with his declaration of betrayal. Oh man, what a story. Guys, I have raved about Chris Rate's series before, but if you have never read the Watchers of the Throne series, you really do need to. 
It is undoubtedly one of the best series going right now in the whole of Black Library. You really do have to read it. And I can highly recommend the audiobook version. But as always guys, what do you think? Are you surprised that Gilliman didn't just kill the High Lords in the first place, and that he had to plan for such events to transpire? And are you surprised that Trajan Valoris and Phadix, the Grand Master of Assassins, were secretly in league with the Primarch. And do you think this is the end of it? Or is corruption on Terra never truly eradicated? What will the future of Terra be? Can Gilliman truly mould the Imperium back to the desire of the Great Crusade? As always, leave your thoughts in the comments below. I love to read them. Huge thank you to all my subscribers. Your support truly means a lot to me. It really does. And if you're new, please consider subscribing to help the channel grow. And if you enjoyed this particular vid, then why not drop a like on it too. But with that said, I am off, and I'll see you all again real soon.